fabulous as this animation is, you notice that when he changes directions here at four seconds, his face doesn't turn. So we need to uh, give it some sort of legitimacy and plausibility, unless he's just plain stupid and is going to crash into something because he's not looking where he's going. We need to have his head turn so that he's looking in the direction he's going. And then back the other direction, and then as he flies off, have him look where he's going. So let's do that. And we can do that without changing this motion tween. We can go into the whole bird into the library here. And now we only have the one cycle on the timeline for the wings flapping. We're going to add to that at four seconds and then back at each two second interval when he changes directions. We're going to add uh, a tweened animation for him to uh, turn his head. Actually, we're going to move his eyes and his beak. We're going to do some cheating here. But nobody will ever know. Okay, so let's put a full 10 seconds into this timeline here. So click and drag from the top layer to the bottom layer at 10 seconds at 240 frames and press F5 to add frames all the way across there. Now, if we look back into scene one and we scrub down to four seconds, that's where he starts turning and flying the other direction to screen right. And then at six seconds, he starts flying screen left again and then finally flies off starting at eight seconds. We want to go to the four second mark in the whole bird and that's where we're going to insert our tweening animation. We'll start by adding motion tweens to the eyes. So you can unlock these two layers, the pupils and the eyes. And then since we're going to start our animation at the four second mark, let's zoom in on those so we can select them a little bit easier and slide it over. So at four seconds, let's in the beak and in the pupils and eyes, let's insert a keyframe. So select those, click and drag and select those and press F6. Then somewhat arbitrarily, we'll go six frames down and add more keyframes uh, for the uh, other end of that tween animation. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. And then insert the keyframes F6. All right. So first we'll start with the eyes. We're going to do something a little different with the beak though. Because we're going to add classic tweens on both layers, we can do it at the same time. Right click and create classic tween. And you'll see on both layers, you've got this arrow here showing the direction. So go to the first frame on both of those. We can shift select so we've got them both. And you can see that the bounding box on them is working. We've already got this position here. We want to go to what's going to be the other position. So click and drag to select those two keyframes. And then we can arrow over, get the eyes in position. So it's just kind of sticking out from that side and then click off of it and then click the pupils and then move them into position. So they're looking the other way. And if we now scrub through, you can see we got the animation where it's moving from there, then to center, looking forward, and then to that side. Now we're going to do something different with the beak. Let's go ahead and lock those two layers, the pupils, because we got that done, and unlock the beak. Now we're going to do the beak differently because it's not a perfectly round object. It's not symmetrical. We're going to put two different classic tweens in the beak animation. Let's start here on frame 98 
and press F6. And then let's right click, create classic tween. So it's going to be a very short animation, just three frames. Click on that keyframe now, press Q, and we're going to start flipping it. Hold down the shift and the option key so that the center stays in place. And we're going to just start giving the, the, the appearance along with the eyes that he's turning his head. Now we're not going to go all the way to the middle because look what happens. It becomes one dimensional. It just becomes one line. That won't work. So we'll take it just far enough to trick the viewer's eye into thinking that it's turning. So we'll go that far with it. And then we go to the next frame after that, add another keyframe, F6, and then let's put in a classic tween from there to the opposite position. So it's going to flip from this position over to the opposite. So hold down the shift and option key and then take it over to there and then we need to reposition it a little bit arrow over so that's where it's going to start and then let's go to the last frame and take it all the way and then put it in position so now you can see that we have a complete animation and it doesn't it only just jumps from there to there so we don't have that uh, funny looking line and it's believable okay so that's at four seconds so let's go back into scene one and let's take a look at what happens at that point now that we have our animation go to frame one and then press return and then when it gets to four seconds, magically, he's looking the other direction. And then we need to do the same at six seconds, where he starts flying the other direction. So let's go back into the whole bird edit mode. And we can do a little copying and pasting here, uh, and then some tweaking to save ourselves time. So click and drag from the right to the left here and to select all of this animation and right click on it and then copy frames and then let's, let's go down to six seconds and click and drag to the point where we want those to paste and right click and paste frames now we got the same thing happening here, so but we need to uh, actually reverse what's going on because we want it to go from this way to this way. Simply click and drag all that we have here, right click, and reverse frames. So now it starts from the direction we're going, then looks back the other direction. So let's check our work, go back into scene one, and let's play it. And then he looks back the other direction. Beautiful. And then we have to do it one more time that way. So back into the whole bird. And then that's, we have him looking back the other direction when we're going off at eight seconds. So click and drag those three frames at eight seconds, like we did before, then right click and paste frames. We pasted what we did before, so it's going to go back in the original animation direction that we had prior. But now you can see when we go here, we need to get rid of those keyframes. Plus, we since we've pasted in those frames, we've added frames to the whole animation, which we don't want. So first of all, let's click and drag on those three keyframes, right click and clear keyframe. Okay, so it's going to 
remain in that direction as he flies off. And then we need to click and drag and remove these frames. And so that that works the way we want it. So let's go back into scene one. And we're going to watch our whole, the, rather than scrub all the way back to the first frame, the shortcut is to hold down shift and then the comma key. And that goes back to the first frame. So that's, that's the shortcut for that. And let's go ahead and um, publish what we have here. Hold down command key along with return and we'll export that Swift movie. And he looks that way, and then he looks that way, and then he flies off. And repeat. Now with the second scene, and we'll have the bird flying in it, but we need to have it flying from the side. And we're going to add another view of the bird from his right side, flying from left to right, you know, continuing uh, in the same direction, but with a different background. Now we can do these things in different order, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, add another scene. We do that by going into Insert, down to Scene, and it adds another scene, Scene 2. We can see that it's blank, a blank stage, and so we're going to need to fill it with a new scene. And I'm going to try to show you some shortcuts to save some time, and so we'll do that first. Let's go ahead and add some uh, background to the scene just to get it started. We need to unlock these, and what we'll do is we'll uh, copy and paste the parts of the background into the scene 2 from scene 1. So let's take the ground and the clouds and the sky. We'll just use these three for the new background in scene two now, and then uh, we'll decide later on what else we'll add to it. So once you've got those three layers selected, then right click, copy layers, and then let's go into scene two and click up here and paste layers and then so you've got the identical layers now even with the timeline and everything and the animation in the second scene and we can modify those clouds if we do a simple free transform on them like flipping them that way and then maybe stretching them out so they're a little wider we have to avoid though going into the edit mode on each of them because if we do that then we're going to be changing the symbol itself and that'll change it also in scene one. So we're just going to limit it, our modification to uh, the free transform. Well, let's go back into scene two. Press the select key. And now we have the scene one and scene two. So let's lock down all the layers in scene one so we don't accidentally change anything and go back to scene two and take a look at it and that's just fine for now. And we have this default layer, let's name that bird side flying and let's lock the other layers for now. Now we have to create a bird with the side view as I said before and I'm going to try to do it with some shortcuts so that we can save some time. Let's start by clicking on the whole bird in the library and right click on it and duplicate. Okay so you'll see you have the duplicate symbol dialog box and let's change that name to whole bird side and there it is now in the library double click on it and we're going to go in and edit it the changes we're going to make involve 
changing the body perspective so that it works in the side view. But we have to, like I said before, the only changes that we can make in these parts can be done in the free transform. Because if we go into and edit any of them, then uh, in the edit mode, then it'll also change it in the original instance of those graphics. So to begin with, let's grab this whole thing and let's reorient it like it's flying sideways. And then let's go in and since we have these classic tweens, we want to get rid of those. So select them all and right click anywhere in there. Select clear keyframes because we won't have any motion tweens on the face as we did before. So let's go ahead and make the basic modifications. We'll need the legs on different layers because one's going to be in the front and one's going to be in the back. But first let's change the shape of the body like it would be from the side. So select that layer and make sure you've got the free transform with the Q. Let's slim it down a little bit as if we're looking at it from the side and then lock it down and let's do the same with the head just a little bit then lock that let's lock all the layers and then it's a good practice to just unlock the one you're working on let's move that beak into position rotate it around then flip it Now with the eyes, since we're going to have to get rid of one of the eyes since we're looking at it from the side, we need to get rid of one of those. But we can't do that without making it go away from the uh, original whole bird. If we delete it from the bird side bird, then we'll be deleting it from the whole bird. So what we'll do is we'll just delete it here and also the pupils will delete we'll bring in one eye and one pupil as instances from the library so you go into the library here's the eyes and we'll just copy one of them and then we'll go into the whole bird side and paste an eye there and we'll size it down I'm gonna go ahead and go in tighter so I can get a little better control and put that eye in a reasonably good position and then we'll do the same for the pupil go into edit mode on the pupils just select one of them copy it go back into the bird side and make sure we have the pupils layer selected and paste it and move that into position and size it down remember you hold down the shift key to make a uniform change in size and then let's just kind of arrow it into position like it's looking forward Make sure and save on a regular basis. Actually, I, I don't like that position here of the beak. So let's unlock the beak and move that so it's more on the rim of the, the head. That's better. And then the eye looks pretty good where it is. Now the wings as they are are not going to work so let's unlock those and select that layer and then just get rid of them. Let's put the legs into position. Now we need to have one leg behind the body and the other one in front. So we'll make this one the right leg and this one the left leg and so that will be in back. 
put this one in back so we'll have to put it on a layer behind the body so let's command X to cut it and then we'll go down here and we'll create a new layer let's name it leg left and shift command V to paste it in there in position and that's pretty good and then let's move this leg down rotate it so at least somewhat plausible position and let's flip it so that the claws are in front that's pretty good for now now one thing we don't have in the original is the tail because the tail is kind of behind the body but here since we're flying from the side we need to be able to see the tail birds got to have a tail so let's create a tail real quick and we'll put it up on the top layer create a new layer let's lock these off and let's call it the tail and let's create one so we need to go into our tools of course if we know the shortcut we'll just click R on our keyboard and and for color we got black for the stroke we need that bright yellow so let's just sample this and we want the stroke height to be three so that's good so let's go ahead and draw out a rectangle and we can shape that I'm not gonna tell you everything from now on because you should know how to do most of these things now especially with the drawing so just kind of put it into a position remember we're on the new layer which we'll call tail and so it won't make any difference uh, with the other graphics that we have in there but we can position it reasonably and make it look like a pretty good tail and let's get rid of that part and the reason why it's looking like this is because it's partly overlapping if we select it then we can change it sort of a hint of the body stroke coming through without being the full thickness and now we've got our tail so now we need to create some wings let's lock off that tail and we can do something similar to what we did bef with the other parts uh, in making the wing but uh, we're going to do it in a somewhat different way so we still have here in the library wing left and wing right let's go into wing right double click on it and let's select the whole thing it looks like it's already selected but let's copy that and now let's go into the library and create a new symbol we'll call that wing side and let's shift command V paste it in place and now since we are looking from the side we're going to be having a different perspective on the wings they're going to be going up and down but more facing us so this is going to be a, a little different animal the speed is going to be the same so we're going to have a full cycle of the flapping in uh, every 12 frames at 24 frames per second so let's click on frame 12 and press F5 for a blank keyframe now let's rotate this wing and position it so that it makes sense for what we're doing on the bird let's go back into our whole bird side 
let's create a new layer for the front wing and the back wing. It'll be the right wing will be front and the left wing will be back. So let's rename this wing right. We'll rename this wing left. If you can see that's behind the body. So let's start with the wing right and let's go grab wing side here and drag it into the stage. Next let's shape it. Press Q and let's make it look like it's we'll start from the top on the move. Maybe let's rotate it just a little bit and position it. We can tweak it later, but that looks pretty good for the first position. Now that we have that in position, we can go into the wing side edit mode and modify this to look more like what it would look like from the side. Kind of swept back a little bit maybe and wider and we're going to create our animation here nested and then we can bring that animation into the whole bird side symbol. So let's start off by right clicking on this and creating a motion tween and the first position will be up and then let's go to frame 6 and then let's move this pivot point down right down to the joint and then let's flap it down to the opposite kind of mirror look and then let's go and you can see we've got what appears to be a one half cycle then let's go to the final frame and let's bring it back to approximately where it started so that's pretty close and we got one cycle of flapping. All right, so let's go back into the whole bird side. Make sure we're on the wing right layer. And let's bring that wing side animation into the scene and position it. And let's see how that looks. Not bad. I think we could bring it up a little bit higher in position so that we don't see so much of the shoulder or the back. Let's see how that looks. That's a little better. And so let's lock that off and we're going to put the same symbol into wing left which is going to be in the back of the body. So wing side, drag it in, get it, give it a reasonable position similar to the other one, only bring it up further and maybe rotate it a little bit. Let's see how that looks. So we see just enough of it to give us that sense of perspective. And we could tweak it later on if we want. But that works pretty well. And I want to move that left leg a little bit in so it kind of matches the perspective sense that we're getting from the left wing. All right, that looks pretty good. So now that we've got our bird side view complete, let's go into the scene and let's center it up. And we have our bird side flying layer. Let's drag it up to the top so that it's visible. And whole bird side instance into the scene. That's looking pretty good.